Hey guys, Brian Douglas here from Control System Lectures. I have received tons of questions on YouTube and on Twitter asking me what hardware and software I use to make my drawing videos. So I thought I'd just answer everybody's questions all at once and put this video out showing my process for making my videos. The first thing I do is come up with my topic, which I usually do several weeks in advance. I kind of have an idea of where I want to take the channel and what topics I want to cover. So that happens weeks before I even start any of the scripting process. Uh, about a week before I put out the video, I start researching that topic. Uh, it's pretty much as much as time allows, which isn't always as much as I'd like, but I read different explanations in a bunch of different textbooks that I have, uh, watch a lot of different YouTube videos of how people explain the topic already, read different websites, I talk to my peers and co-workers, and from there, I throw out all of the stuff that doesn't make much sense to me, or I think is too confusing, or is just extraneous for learning the topic, and try to craft a story that makes sense to me. From there I write my script, which usually just starts out as an outline, and then over the next few days I'll tweak it a little bit and add to it, and eventually it'll become a full script. I try to draw most of it out on paper first just to see what it'll look like, and then it also gives me something to follow when I'm doing the real drawing. I use the Bamboo Create pen tablet from Wacom to do all of my drawings. It can run between $160 and $200 depending on where you get it, and I know that can be a bit steep, so there are other tablets out there that probably work just as well and are a little bit cheaper. The drawing software that I use is Photoshop CS5. And the only reason why I use that versus just some other drawing program is that I already have it on my computer. I open a new file and set the width to 2500 and the height to 5000 pixels. This gives me a lot of room to work with. I fill in the background black, set the zoom to 100%, and then stretch out the screen as large as I can. I pretty much do all of my writing with the brush tool with a size 4, and then I set the hardness, flow, and opacity to 100%. If you're not using Photoshop, then you might not have to worry about that last bit of information. Now Photoshop also isn't a cheap program, and it's definitely overkill for this application. So if you don't have a paint program on your computer, there are free ones online that I think will work just as well, something like Sumo Paint. Let me just try to set it up the way I would in Photoshop with a paintbrush of size 4. Oh, well, that looks a little bit chunky. Let me try three. All right, that's a little better. But anyway, just play around with this if you don't have Photoshop and see what works best for you. Okay, back to Photoshop. Before I start a drawing, I set up my screen capture program. I use QuickTime for this, mostly because it came with my iMac and I didn't have to buy it. But setting it up is really simple. You just go up to File and say New Screen Recording. It's grayed out for me here now because I'm using it to make this video. But I select the no microphone method because I'm going to do a voiceover later in iMovie. So this is going to record my entire screen, and now I just have to draw through the script following along with my paper drawing that I made earlier. And once I'm done with the drawing, I hit stop recording up in the corner to end the screen capture program. And now I can edit the video in iMovie, once again because it came free with my iMac. I think you guys are starting to see a trend here. I select File, Import Movie, and then select the screen recording that I just made with QuickTime. I find the portion of the clip where I do the drawings and I add it to my timeline. First thing I do is speed the entire clip up four times to 400%. I find that I usually want to tell a story about four times faster than I can draw it. Next I crop the entire clip so that all you can see is the black part of the scene. Now I can go through and edit out all of the parts where I made mistakes, and trust me, there's a lot of them. In fact, some of them even make it through to the final product, but I capped most of them here. Here I'm just deleting the beginning and ending part of the clip because some of the menus from Photoshop got in the way. Once I've cleaned it up a bit, I can do my voiceover directly in iMovie. Welcome back to Control System Lectures. In this video, I'm describing how I make a video. And now I'll adjust the voiceover, or I will speed up or slow down specific portions of the clip so that the voice and what I'm drawing match up nicely. I do one final full review of the movie, then I compile it, and finally I can upload it to YouTube. 
So that's my process for making a video. I think it's probably obvious that I borrowed a lot from Khan Academy, but I changed a few things to make it work for me. Things like the voiceover instead of talking live, and I speed it up because I like to be able to cover a large amount of, of information in, in a short amount of time, keep people interested, and if they have trouble following along, it's a video so they can watch it a few different times. But the thing I want to stress is that what works for me might not work for you. So if you're going to go out there and make a video, just experiment with a few different techniques and, and see what you like best. And one other thing is I just, I highly recommend that you guys get out there and try making videos. Uh, not only are you going to benefit greatly from it by learning a, a subject enough to be able to go off and teach it, but there are tons of people out there who will benefit from your knowledge and experience. Uh, one last thing I have to ask for you guys is to share this video with your peers, your friends, mentors, professors, anybody who you think has valuable information to share and show them how, how simple it can be done and get that knowledge out there onto YouTube and give people an opportunity to, to learn the things that you guys learn and we'll all be better off for it. Thanks for watching this video guys. We'll see you next week.